Hey everyone, welcome to the live. If you're watching the replay, thank you for being here. Please make sure you give me a like. I'm not going to be doing any cooking today um, for this live. I've done a lot of cooking this week, so I'm kind of just taking a chill time. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just out here. It's a gorgeous day outside today, so I thought that you guys would like to enjoy it with me. I got some animals underneath my feet, two cats and a dog. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Are you having a good weekend? Hello, Judy. How are you? I got a new mug. It's a Montana mug. I wish it said it on the other side as well because this is how you hold it. It's got a good thumb. It's hard to find a good mug, you know? I mean, there's a lot of mugs out there. They are not all created equal. Hello, homebound mama. Good to see you today. I know you haven't been able to make the last couple of ones. Mrs. C, hello. Amanda just got a long nap after church. Very nice. Naps are nice. I got a nap earlier too. I love it on the weekends. I usually get a nap when husband's home. Um, and then I can stay up a little longer with him on the weekends if I can get a nap between, you know. Because it seems like no matter how late I stay up, I'm always waking up at the same time because I'm just a morning person, you know. So if I want extra sleep, I have to go to bed early. I can't sleep in, you know, my body. I just wake up. Can't help it. Unless I'm sleeping on the couch. The couch kind of like absorbs my soul as I sleep because it's so comfy. <laughs> oh, Kelly, so happy you caught a live too. Pamela, hello from Cincinnati. Excuse me. Hello, Annie Tam. Also, if you guys have a channel, you're more than welcome to leave a link to your channel in the chat box, and then my mods will approve it. Um, I'm all about, you know, sharing the love and everybody knowing about each other, because some of you would be like, oh, I didn't know you had a channel, which I say that all the time. So, please, if you have a channel, leave it linked below, like Miss Nana Cam here. Oh, pink's outside also. It's so nice. I like the soup mug that your dad gave you. That is a good one, the big, big Montana one. I just had my tulips in it. <laughs> uh, Amanda, my daughter has not gotten her bike yet. Thank you for a reminder. Um, I need to write that down. Pink, will you write that down? Then I need to. I need to talk to my teacher. Her teach my teacher. Talk to her teacher about that bike. She's my little secretary. I tell her write stuff down for me. Take notes. <laughs> um, maybe it was. Maybe they did after they're done with school. I'm not quite sure. Um. But yeah, so, but yeah, she won a bike, and now they have a new reading program where if you read um, for every two hours, you get entered into prize categories for every two hours. So there's one for two hours, one for four, one for six, one for eight. And then at 10, you get one ticket into the big grand prize, which is a Nintendo Switch. I haven't even played a Nintendo Switch, but um, apparently they're all the next all the rage, right? Mine used to be Game Boy. I'm back in the Game Boy. I had a Sega. We used to travel and we'd be in the airport. I would have my Sega with me in the airport. You know, I remember the old Game Boy. I remember when the Game Boy Colors came out. Um, but anyway, so a Nintendo Switch is the grand prize. So the kids are super excited about that. Um, and we've been reading probably about 15 minute chunks. 15 minute chunks, yeah. And so I broke the time frame up on the card into eight dots. So every time we read 15 minutes, we scratch out a dot and then we'll get to the two hour mark you know so it's been nice good motivation um the boys are excited about possibly winning a nintendo switch <laughs> Pink's always up at 4 a.m me too like i'm just a morning bug i don't know and i get more done i have energy i get more done the house is quiet you know i can i like I can work when it's dark and quiet. Like, that's when I feel like I get my best work done. My husband's all about, like, turning on the lights and everything. Energy up, energy up. And I'm like, ugh, no, I just, like, mellow to get stuff done right. And he's like, no, you got to be awake. And I was like, ah. <laughs> he's one where he all has the lights on it all the time. And I'll, like, unscrew three of the four light bulbs because it's just too bright. And then he turns them on. He's like, all right, he's got to screw them back in. <laughs> All uh, the little things you put up with in a marriage, right? Oh. Uh. oh, I don't think I turned off my phone. Sorry about that. Husband's on his way home. Robbie, hello from Mississippi. Hi, how are you? Do you have nice weather there as well? Chrissy, hello. Kelly says it's twenty or it's seven four today with 
was 84 yesterday and I thought I was going to die from the heat after being cold. Yeah, it's definitely, if the sun was on me, it'd be really warm right now. But it's so gorgeous. I think it says 70, 72 right now. It's gorgeous. So we've been outside. I got the baby chicks outside in the tractor. They're so funny. They're getting big already. Um, yes, so it's nice out. Um, we've been kicking the kids out. See, the kids went to, um, with a friend to the water class today. Um, it's not a class. It's where they hold swim class, but it's um, a swim center that's indoors. So they went and played there and stuff. So they had a lot of fun. It is a nice day. The birds are chirping. Chickens are chirping. It's great. <laughs> the chickens chirp? I don't know. <laughs> hey, Carrie. How are you? My daughter has a Nintendo Switch. She's like playing. She likes playing Just Dance in hers. Oh, okay. Dance would be fun. Yeah, and they're getting to a point. Let's see, they're, you know, um, Betty Jan will be eight. And then the boys will be seven. So they're at that age where they're doing games and everything. We taught them the Xbox. So they're playing like Halo and stuff on the Xbox. Um, <coughs> excuse me. They're also playing Rayman, something I used to play. Like I played that between motherhood and after college. You know, I played that game for a little bit. <laughs> there have been a lot of special events with my daughter um, indicated... Oh, I see. Yes, thank you, Judy. National Honor Society. Wow. Amanda's a little bit older than me. Oh, okay. So you remember Atari video games? Who remembers when the games were in the computer before we had game consoles? Yes, I were... Um, Oh, wait, that was probably before me. I remember, I'm part of game councils. Like, I remember playing the PC. I played Sims. I remember the official, when first Sims came out, I was I was there for it. Hey, Sharon. Uh, yeah, I don't remember that game system. That must have been that must have been before me. Pong. Is that the one with the bars moving the ball? Yeah. I don't think I ever... I might have played that in school. I do remember um, what's that trail one, uh, the Oregon Trail. I remember playing that in school. Um, I haven't played that in a while. That'd be fun to try and find and download and uh, and see what the game is and make my kids play it. You know? <laughs> oh, we went. The kids had their first concert. They did a scene. They did one where they were singing, and then they did one where it was a dance. And um, the concert was from kindergarten through fifth grade. And the uh, fifth graders and the fourth graders did a ukulele song. And the third graders did three recorder songs. And we heard recorder and husband and I were like, oh boy, <laughs> you know. And we're like, what grade's that third? Oh, that's not far behind. Oh boy. But uh, my, I remember playing a recorder, you know. Um, husband remembers playing the recorder. And they did three really short songs. So it was a little more tolerable. <laughs> Chrissy wants to know where everyone's at. Lots of Florida. You are born in 1978. Okay, I was 1988, so you're 10 years old. I feel like I tend to get along with women who are like 10 years my senior. And then it just seems like I, that seems to be the age where I've always just, they're like, they just went through whatever life experience I'm going through. Like they're 10 years advanced. They seem to be, you know, they just have finished that. They got a little more knowledge you know, and they usually, like, I don't know, I just get along pretty well. I like their advice. <laughs> their computer games are in the 80s. Wow. Oh, Donkey Kong. Oh, hey, Jennifer, welcome. So excited for your upcoming collab with Southern Mama. Yeah, have you guys seen that? I'm doing a collab with Brooke from Southern Frugal, Southern Frugal Mama. That's exciting. Um, she announced it on her Facebook. I guess I should make a post too. I don't know. I didn't want to jinx it. So I'm like, I'm not going to say anything until we know for sure, you know? Um, but yeah, it's going to be super fun. It's a different, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's something that's completely different that I've, that I do that she does. Okay. So she does a lot of the $5 dinners um, where you have a dollar budget and you're trying to make a meal and you can only spend that much. 
I'm more of a using whatever's in my pantry to create a meal kind of creator, right? Content creator. So we did a $20 realistic budget for a single person um, and shows how to take $20 and get seven meals and like small portions for one or two people. The goal was one pre one person, but mine's more like two servings because just I've been cooking for an army forever. I'm sorry. So trying to cut down this amount that I cook plus having a strict budget and having to shop for that. And it was definitely um it was interesting for me and a challenge for me and I had a lot of fun. Definitely learned some things that I would do differently. Um but it was a lot of fun. So it's it's uh yeah, so that's coming up. We're going to be posting those videos on Wednesday. So make sure you stay tuned on the 17th. If you have not checked her out, go do that. Her name's Brooke. I think she's in, um, where's Brooke live? I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Will it be a lot? It's not going to be a live. It's just going to be a video. It's a collaboration. So she made one where she took $20 and bought whatever she could find and made seven meals. And then um, I don't know where she, I don't know what store she went to. I ended up going to Winco. So I had my $20 and I went to Winco and I got what I needed. I had a general idea of what recipes I wanted to create. Um, but getting to the store, that kind of changed a bit. So you'll see that. Oh, Amanda's getting her um, garden planted. We have not done, done ours yet. Um, I have an electric mower that I'm going to be reviewing this week that I'm going to get out there in the garden and mow everything down. And then we'll figure out what we have, um, what we're going to plant, things like that. We let some potatoes um, over winter. So we're going to let those go this year and see one of the chickens over there. Um, we're going to let those grow, and then we'll, um, when we dig those, we'll see. We'll see. That's funny. We've never over-wintered um, potatoes before. Oh, hey, Natasha. How are you? Oh, hey, Abigail. I haven't seen you in a while. How are you? Your baby peeps are absolutely beautiful. Love your white turkey. Yes. Uh, her name's Frosting. <laughs> I've mentioned to you that we have one. She is a character and gives us many laughs. My turkey, like she's coming. My turkey, like she, she, she's just laid two eggs over here on the back porch. Watch, I can go grab them. She's been laying them back here, yelling at me from the back porch. Anytime I'm out here, like if she would, if she knew right now that I was outside on the back porch, she would be here next to me. She's been following me. So here's her eggs. It's brand new. This is her. Let's see, third and fourth egg. And the turkeys, they got the spots. And this is a little bigger than a... This is probably the size of a chicken egg. They're usually a little bigger, but these are her first couple of eggs. So, and a lot of my girls have been giving me double yolks lately. And the chickens, so that's exciting. So, yes, thank you. I think I, um, cakes gives, or cake and frosting give me a lot of laughs, too. We really enjoy having turkeys. <laughs> Tell me you live on a farm without telling me you live on a farm. Yep. <laughs> With the the crow in. <laughs> Rooster crows, yeah. I can't wait to see them because it's hard to cook for one person. I used to cook for a bunch of people, now cook for one. And it is kind of hard to cook for one person. You know, and I find myself still making um like two portions too, or but I was like, well, maybe we can do one and do leftovers, you know, because it's probably not ideal to be cooking every single night. You know, not everybody has that time. So if you can prep like I have one time where I'm just prepping everything to get ready for the meals you know so I think it's gonna be a good one it's definitely a challenge for me um it's gonna take some editing I gave myself two days to edit it because um it's just edit it is it the right word yeah because it takes a while and I have me I'm going shopping and then I have it all spread out and I talk about what I'm kind of what my plan is and then I'm going to don't mind the chicken she just laid it <laughs> Laid an egg in my indoor plant. I know. Her and I have a mutual agreement, though, where she's at the back door. I let her in. She goes to the plant. She doesn't destroy it. She lays her egg, and then she comes right back out, you know, so. <laughs> oh, gosh. I never thought I'd be a day that I'd be a contender. <laughs> 
I can't stand videos who eat while they're talking manners. Well, I can't say much, Lori. Sometimes I do that, so. I tend to take way too big of bites, and I'm raw, 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 so. <laughs> I don't know. I forget you're on camera, huh? <laughs> Well, I just, not that I forget, I just don't really care, you know, but I, I know a lot of people don't like that. Brooke lives in Tennessee. Thank you, Carol, Tennessee. Am I drinking coffee yet? Can you see it? it smells a little bit on me. It's fine. Um, yeah, this is vanilla coffee. It's so good. I like taking like a vanilla or like a flavored coffee and then mix in half of that with dark roast because we like the, the richness of dark roast. Um, so I usually do half and half. Carol says, hi, Mama Baird. I've been watching all your videos. I love them. Well, thank you, Carol. I appreciate that. I really enjoy making them. This is a dream job, that's for sure. Lisa says, hello, Carolina. Hope you're having the best day today. I really am. I really am. My uh, One of my friends wanted to take my kids to a swim center, and then they stopped and got Happy Meals, which they never did. And then they're at the park right now playing, enjoying their Happy Meals, like a picnic out there. And, you know, so it's pretty nice. And I just gave her some money and she took my kids. <laughs> so, like, just enough to cover, like, her gas money and stuff. And I met her there in town and then she's going to bring them back here. So, the kids have been out of my hair all day and they're getting super tired. So, that's great. It's nice. I've never really had, like... It sounds kind of, I don't know, sad, I guess, but I've never really had, like, friends that you could really count on, you know, like, um, just moving here to Montana has completely changed my experience with the community. Like, the, com this community has been so welcoming, and I just feel like I completely be myself here, and once I was completely myself, I've met some great people who now are friends, you know, because you put yourself out there, and, um... <laughs> And this is just a great place. So I'm so, ha so happy and grateful that we moved here and that I, you know, I put myself out there way more than I did before. And that's opened up opportunities for me that I normally wouldn't have. So, you know, make this the year of yes, right? Say yes more, but also have boundaries more. So it's, you know, work on both, you know, <laughs> so say what is yes, but no when to say no, right? Okay. <laughs> oh, Jennifer, you made a good evening. Oh, it's so nice to see you too, Abigail. How have you been? Dolly says, hey, Carolina from Detroit. It's so nice outside. 81. Woo, me and my boy grand monster outside sitting all oh, with the old fur girl. The old fur gal. Very nice, Dolly. It is nice out. Uh, I guess it's just nice everywhere out today. The North America needed a sunny day, right? <laughs> Sounds like an egg coming in. Yes, Sasha knows. <laughs> I live alone and I find it so hard to cook and deal with leftovers. I can't cook just a small amount, even for one. I understand that. This is one where I'm kind of cooking and I like cook something that I'm going to use into the next meal. So um, like, for example, spinach, I'm cooking a side of spinach I have with one meal, but I made extra because that I'm going to dice up and chop and use in a different way for the next meal that I'm cooking. So I tried to really challenge myself to um, think like a single person and um, about how I would want to use this food and how I could use all of it in different ways besides just the same thing over and over. It was very challenging for sure. And I definitely think that I'm going to... Whoa, cat fight. <laughs> the cat's just freaked out. Come here, it's okay. Sometimes our neighbor cat comes over one of the boys and he gets the girls all fired up, but they're, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Ugh, it's not kids fighting against animals, right? Oh, at least I didn't get scratched. <laughs> That's the worst. When you're holding one and they freak out and you get the in your legs. Woof. Now I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, the challenge, right? So I think with, um, I might continue to do it because it was a lot of fun. I lived here my entire life when I want to move to Florida. I know a lot of people who live in Florida. That's a great mug. Thanks, Jennifer. Good one. I wish I had Montana on the other side as well. That'd be nice. I mean, not all mugs are created equal. Like, you got to have the, like, this can fit the whole hand, you know. And then I like that it has a flat here for the thumb. 
so you can really make sure you got a good grip on it. Just say it's got a nice lip so it catches the coffee dribble, it doesn't go down the cup, you know. <laughs> Someone's very proud she probably just laid an egg, yep. <laughs> oh, hey Paul, how are you? He's from Pennsylvania. Mm. Oh, hey Jessica Edwards, hello, how are you? Glad you can catch a live. Sonia, you made it, hello. Melissa, hello, how are you? You would fit right in in the South. We're very polite with our manners, but we love to eat. Oh, yes. I remember uh, the first time we went to the South, we were going to Florida for a vacation, and we stopped in Georgia, and we went to a Waffle House, and the lady was like, you all want some sweet Thai? <laughs> and it's just we, we weren't... Um, used to sweet tea but we heard it was a thing so when we got offered it like we just cracked up and we're like oh it really is a thing it's sweet tea because like here they don't have sweet tea they just have tea and i'm if it's just coming from missouri where you have to make sweet tea like you have sweet and unsweet those are options here sweet is not an option it's just unsweet so when i transferred jobs here because i was still working at applebee's when we moved here i transferred to this one and I was like, wait, you guys don't have sweet tea? She's like, no. I'm like, what? And I was just, because I was so, every place has sweet tea everywhere I lived. You know, like sweet tea is a thing. So it's weird being here. I don't even drink sweet tea, but it's, I'm still so used to having to make sweet tea everywhere I worked. <laughs> Always be yourself. We love you. Oh, thank you, Pink. I love that. You look so pretty. Oh, thanks, Patty. Karen sent me this top. She's so good to me. She dresses me way better than I could ever dress myself. Like, I'm like one where I got like five shirts and that's good. And now I got a closet full because she gets these at um, discounts. And she just knows me better than I know me when it comes to clothes. I'm so not a clothes person. Which is really appreciated because my mom used to buy my clothes for me. Especially when I got pregnant. She was the one who found comfy clothes for me, and I don't, my mom really came through for that. So I feel like, you know, Karen's one of my mom's helping taking care of me. Oh, Renee says, hello from Helena. It really is amazing weather. Oh, my gosh. Where did you live before Montana? I lived in Missouri. I have lived in Missouri. I went to school in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. I've lived in Orlando for a little bit. I lived in Tucson before we lived in Missouri. And then before that, I was overseas and we lived in Saudi Arabia for a while. That was uh, my elementary school years. We were in Saudi Arabia and then we were in Tucson and Missouri for my middle school and then uh, stayed in Missouri all the way through high school. I'm a social butterfly, but there are some people that embrace that and others are buttholes you are right and you got to know when you know when when people i don't know i could tell when people when i could talk to people when i couldn't you know <laughs> not you the whole meal i hear you laura okay on the in the smacking <laughs> most people here aren't exactly friendly like i don't know i think in missouri i just it wasn't as friendly in missouri either like when i moved here and people are so nice and it just it makes you want to be a nicer person you know and I feel like I'm a pretty nice person but I gotta be nicer if I want to live here you know because these people are just I just feel so welcomed and people help so much and um you know I want to it makes you want to be like that too I've been helped so much just being here um so it makes you inspires you to do that as well and to pay it forward and stuff and um just the community is fantastic so i love it and i just i guess i didn't realize how mean people were in missouri until we moved here and maybe i mean it's just my experience you know you do so much more i believe than you give yourself credit for oh you're probably right abigail you know we always at the end of the day think about what we could have done done what we could have done better instead of you know what we did great i've been trying to do that for myself though trying to have more um you know not not judge myself at the end of the day but go through achievements and then go through what I could work on you know and trying to really you did a good job with doing this Caroline I was like Caroline you got up there and you did those dishes I'm so proud of you you know sometimes you can't wait on other people to give you validation you got to validate yourself you know you'd be like man I knocked them dishes out of the park or I folded that whole mountain of laundry oh yeah you know 
high five, give yourself a high five. You know, you really gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you know, be nice to yourself, I guess what you're saying. <laughs> I lived in Tennessee, spent summers in Georgia, lived in Michigan, Vegas, so I'm used to the friendly and not so much. That's a big, big variety. <coughs> I've visited Vegas when I was a kid, but I haven't been as an adult. Patty says, I'm so happy I made this live. I'm so glad you made it as well. Oh, hey, Sue from Pennsylvania's here, waiting for more rain. Oh, I love the rain. That's one thing here. It doesn't have rain or thunderstorms i miss thunderstorms those are always the best and seeing the lightning in the sky you know awesome nice hey i resemble that comment carlina <laughs> uh oh trisha hello hey paula neighbors i'm in pennsylvania too lots of pennsylvania tonight kid free that's exciting it is pretty exciting it's so quiet i took a nap i was like i'm gonna get all this stuff done and then i took a nap <laughs> i could stay up though Oh, Uncle Chris, how are you? We have sweet tea down south where your family's from. I'm telling you, it's like sweet tea, and you got to say it with the tine, you know. <laughs> sweet tea's so yummy, and it's got a lot of sugar. I remember making it at McDonald's, and we always used like the, was that a four pound thing of sugar? I don't even know, the small one. Um, we would put one of those in like five gallons. I don't know, it was ridiculous. <laughs> What? No sweet tea? You'll get kicked out of Texas for that. See, so they have it in Texas. I'm telling you, no sweet tea here. I was like, you guys want to make sweet tea? Like, it was just, I was, that was like, wow, where am I? <laughs> I'm the only one in my family that does not, does not like to, the tea, but some people think it's gross that I drink buttermilk. That is gross, Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think my, uh, my grandpa used to drink buttermilk, so I mean, you like what you like, right? <laughs> Oh, we talk about crystal light. Crystal light is so great. I was thinking about getting some of that and like adding it to lemonade. So we'll have flavored lemonade, you know. Who taught me to cook? Um, well, I went to pastry school. And then after pastry school, I got out in like the industry and realized that I like more cooking than I do the actual pastry industry. So I kind of did more line cooking. Plus that was more, um, I always had to work two jobs. As soon as I graduated college, I was two jobs, um, one to pay for the college and one to pay for life. And I had to do night shifts and that was all line cooking more than pastry. So I became a line cook and then I would do some pastry stuff in the morning. Unless I just like line cooking. And um, so I always had two jobs, usually in the kitchen industry um cooking and i just pick up stuff from there and then you know i like watching um cooking shows looking through cookbooks you just kind of you know you just kind of pick stuff up along the way i never really had a super like one certain person who taught me how to cook um i had a bunch of different people teach me stuff along you know along the way and um just by experimenting i do a lot of um trying things out learning different flavors and what goes well together and then experimenting from there you know um so yeah like I would say I surpassed both my parents in cooking skills um so they were uh my mom was a lot of boxed meals and mixing stuff together because she worked full-time you know so she worked full-time and then had to mom too and she did a lot of like um hamburger helper they had like those um was one co complete dinners or something where I have like a can and then you make like a can of chicken and dumpling filling and then a packet where you make the biscuits and then you combine them and then you bake it and that's dinner you know so kind of like I guess the semi homemade kind of stuff is what my mom did um did most of but still um still a good cook she's still I cannot fry potatoes like her she still fries better potatoes you know um but I'm more of a from scratch and um you know, I just kind of like she'll make like my dad will make mini pizzas and just do like pizza sauce, hot dogs, cheese, you know, and I'm making like barbecue sauce with pulled pork with jalapeno cheese and cilantro. You know, I just kind of elevated a, diff a little more, I would say. So, um, but yeah, so I don't know. I just kind of picked it up along the way, I guess. And I've worked mostly in um, commercial like um 
franchises, I don't know if that's the right word, chains, restaurants like Ruby Tuesday, Applebee's, um, the Cheesecake Factory is probably the most cooking that you do. They do a lot of stuff from scratch, but a lot of the other ones are just kind of like stuff's frozen. You got to learn, like I, uh, I had to learn how to make steak temperatures and meat temperatures. That was one thing I had to learn, and I learned that through Ruby Tuesday. Um, like I started off at the fry station, and then once I got comfortable with that, you know, I would look at the next station. I'd watch them make stuff. I'd ask them questions while we're working, and I pretty much force them to teach me their station. So then I can learn another station, and now I know two stations. And then there's the third station. So I'm like, man, if I know all three stations, you become a key player for the kitchen because you could be put anywhere, right? You become useful, you know, you, so, um, and then I was, so I remember bugging the cook, um, the grill cook asking them, you know, how can you tell when the temperature is ready? And they were teaching me all the different tricks with touching the meat and just touch it. That's how you learn, temping it, touching it so you can feel it. And then you could, so that's how you teach yourself to go by touch, you know, which was fun. I don't know. So I kind of, um, that was one of the trickiest things I'd say you'd have to learn. But once you learn it, you know it. Um, and then learn how to cook some fish. But again, it's just like putting it through the boiler machine, you know. It's not, And they're like, oh, compliments to the chef. I'm like, it's literally frozen fish with <laughs> that you put through a machine. I didn't do anything. The sauce is from a bag, you know. But I'm just like, oh, thanks. So it wasn't major cooking. And I think that's one of the things why I... It, sorry, I'm kind of rambling. Hopefully, I'm not behind on comments. I probably am. But I think that's one of the reasons why I'm enjoying being home and being able to cook whatever I want. Because now I'm not limited to whatever they had. You know, I've learned, like, how to steam broccoli in the microwave. I've learned tricks here and there of how to cook food. But now I can put my own spin on it and I can cook it in my own way. You know, so that's, it's nice. I, I'm grateful for all the experience of it. And I think that it has made me a better cook. And I've been in kitchens since I've been 16, and I'm 26, so I'm not 26, I'm 36, wow, I just shaved 10 years off my life, <laughs> I was, I was confident in that answer too, wasn't I, 36, so I was 20 years, wow, <laughs> that's, that's a little depression, I'm okay. Elena, hello, it has been a while since you caught a live, welcome. If you just can hear, make sure you give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. Patty says, you're the best, Carolina. I have a friend who dresses me, too. She's still in uh, my hometown of New York City, but sends me things. Yeah, it's great. You open up, you're like, ooh, this is great. I'm like, I'm like, oh, this color looks good on me. I'm like, dang, Karen did good. She did good. Halloween in Louisville, spectacular. Did you go? I did not go to that. We're a good daughter, wife, and mother. Thanks to all that matters. God will take care of the rest. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was under 18 when I lived in Vegas. Went to visit my mom there for the summer. and missed her so much. I decided to stay. Aww. Well, that's a good reason to stay. I'm in Mesa, Arizona. It's 90 degrees here today. We're starting summer. Oh, I hate that. Did you, I hear you say in a recent video, coffee isn't healthy for breakfast. I guess I do it wrong because that's always breakfast with a piece of wheat toast. Well, one person suggested adding a scoop of protein to the coffee. Um, I did that. You could, I don't know, it tasted, it, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, you could tell it was in there, right? But I did drink it and um, it wasn't bad. So that was a good way to make like a mocha, you know, and then um, I had a regular cup without it. But it's just, I, it's because I only have coffee is why it isn't healthy. Not that coffee isn't healthy, right? It's just by itself, not healthy. You got to eat to actual substance, you know. Thank you so much for the scrambled eggs trick with the fluffy eggs. You changed my egg game. Very happy kids now. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and see that I picked up when I worked at McDonald's because I had, we had to make the scrambled eggs for the breakfast platters. McDonald's was my very first uh, no, my, no, Jack in the Box was my first job. Second job was McDonald's, and I stayed there for a while through the end of high school. And then after college, I came back to it for a little more. But, um, 
never again. <laughs> anyway, so McDonald's, the scrambled eggs, they teach you to push forward and come back, forward and back. Like, if you sit there and stir, they like, what are you doing? You know, you got to do the forward and math back motion because that pushes it all together and makes a fluffy egg. So that was one of the things that I learned from one of my fast food experiences. You're like, you really never know what you can learn and where from, you know. So, but I'm glad that works for you because I I think it works fantastic. And then I, once I started adding water to it, that made it even fluffier. Hmm. Just trying to watch our sugars. I'm overweight as is. I feel that. I don't like plain water, so I add that, but I would drink it if it's cold. I like room temperature water. It seems to be I can chug it faster. What college did you attend? I went to Sullivan University in um, Louisville, Kentucky. It was okay. I feel like it was overpriced and I realized when I got out in the industry that they taught me a lot of traditional methods and not modern methods. For example, they were teaching you to melt chocolate in a double boiler over the stove. So you have a pot of water, you put a bowl on top of it, and that steam from the boiling water is what melts the chocolate that's in the bowl. So it slowly melts it, it keeps it at a, it's not so harsh that it's direct heat on the chocolate. So that's the traditional way of melting chocolate to make a ganache. And I would go to the, and then I would be at my new job, right? And I would go to do that. And they're like, what are you doing? Throw it in the microwave. And they, I was like, oh, so they don't care. They want more what's quick, right? And so, and it was like that with everything, you know, they taught us to make salad or um, mayonnaise by hand. And we had to whisk, whisk, whisk as we're draining, as we're um, pouring the oil, we had to whisk, 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 you know, and you try and do that out on the, in the industry, you start doing that, you get a bowl, they're like, what are you doing? Put it in the food processor. So I do feel like they were a little behind in the times and like they, they um, I don't know, they um, were um, proud of tr tradition. You know, that's one thing that they taught, like we do it traditional, so we do it from scratch kind of thing. But I don't think it was, you know, I had to learn a lot in the industry that I didn't learn in school. But in their defense. I was also 18 and it was an 18 month program and I went right out of high school. Like I graduated at the end of May and like the next weekend I was moving there to start the summer program. So I started right away. So I was 18, moved away from home. You know, I probably re didn't retain as much as I could have. So that was probably that as well. But I just know that when I was out in the industry, I had to relearn a lot of techniques that I was taught differently. Mendes is your dad, helped you learn to learn cook. He was a cook in the military. I was eight years old when he started teaching me. That's awesome. A cook in the military, man. But that was work. My air went out in my car trying to get it fixed. Oh my gosh, I can't see heat. It's been hot. Ooh, and that's hard. A hot car, too. I remember the days of my AC didn't work and then my heat didn't work. So it's just, I had to deal with whatever temperature. And that was in Missouri. It was humid in Missouri. Don't miss that. Oh, bye, Kelly. Thanks for being here. I learned to cook when I was really little. My mom worked, so I had to help out, but I loved it. Lots of, lots of food, lots of goofs. <laughs> yes, and that's like um, with Gideon getting in there, he's probably the one who helps the most. Him and Betty Jan really like being in the kitchen and learning stuff, and you know that's good. And uh, Gideon told me last time, he's like, it's important that I learn how to cook so I can cook for my kids someday. <laughs> like, oh. It's true. It's true. And you can cook for mama. Don't forget mama. <laughs> that's basic cooking skills, but not many when I started out. Yeah. And I think that's a lot. Like, um, I didn't, like, I didn't even know how to hold a knife. Like I barely knew how to chop anything. Like school taught me, school taught me a lot. Like we had knife skills and basic culinary and stuff. And then out in the industry too, I had a lot of really good managers and, um, some really good, um, co-workers that took me under their wing and just if I asked questions they answered and just let me pick their brains you know it was really nice so you learn who you can learn from by like talking and asking questions and then some um like some people just hate other people and they didn't want to teach you their ways and I'm I can be annoying you know if people either love me or they hate me so if I was one of those I needed to learn from then I just learned from afar and watched them you know and learned that way 
And the more you learn, the more valuable you are to the team, you know? My hubby's a cook, so he teaches me, and I've come a long way. I'm more of a baker. Mm, I like baking, too. I like baking more than, like, the decorating and the fanciness of it, you know? In the mornings, if you need protein, you can add little almonds or hard-boiled eggs. Sometimes I don't make time for breakfast. Uh, yeah, that would sound good, too. Um, nuts are good. Um, and then hard-boiled eggs, I do need to make some. I made some the other day, and they turned out really good. They peeled just great, um, and they were the the farm fresh eggs. So I do need to make some more. We like egg salad, too, you know? It's weird. If I have it, then we eat it, but it's just like, why don't I make it? Just make it, you know? <laughs> Especially the Instapot is super easy. Ooh, almost burned my meatloaf. Nanny, that would not have been good. Hey, McDonald's, best. I worked there in my high school and college years, became a manager. Ugh, it seems like I think like a third of the population has worked at McDonald's. <laughs> I worked at McDonald's back in teen years, but never been. You worked in the front. Yeah, I started in drive through and then I just ended up in the kitchen. You're an amazing creative cook. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate that. Hey, Shelly. How are you? Remember, they switched from fresh eggs to the liquid egg stuff. Yep. They do still have fresh eggs, but they didn't use it for, like, their flat egg sandwiches anymore. And then they had it where they had the liquid eggs where you still had to fold them and in, in fold the eggs. And then it changed to where the egg was already cooked and pre-folded. So now if you go to McDonald's, that egg is already cooked and frozen in that shape, and they just... um put it on the on the on the grill with um some water and they steam it to kind of bring it back to life i don't know that was the last time i worked there so things might be different there now i haven't worked at mcdonald's since i was you know uh 20 21 21 yeah You can tell the difference in taste of the liquid eggs. I feel that. Do your kids eat at school? Now they do. Sometimes Giddy likes to bring um, home lunch, but yeah, they like the the food there. They're like, oh, that food's so good. So we read the menu every day on what they like or what what it is. And um, yeah, they usually like it. So they're doing great. It costs 70 cents a day per kid for them to have breakfast and lunch there. So I think that's pretty reasonable. Do you have enough eggs for egg salad? Um, I might have a couple. Yes, I think we're good. Oh, here's two turkey eggs. <laughs> I know you're trying to be funny, Jennifer. <laughs> Ooh, eggs, Benedict. That sounds good. I need to work on my poaching my eggs, too. Any more practice? I uh, last worked at McDonald's in 1997. I was 27. What was the rate? Do you remember, Judy? What did you get paid then? I remember I worked there for a year in high school and I was full time. Like I got off school at like one o'clock and I would be there by two and I'd work till 10. Um, so in high school, I pretty much worked a full time job and uh, like they didn't care. I had school the next day, you know, they're like our closers are late or our overnighters are late. We need you to stay. I'm like, I got a test in the morning. <laughs> anyway, so um I forgot why I was talking about there. Dang it. Oh, getting paid. Right. So um excuse me. Um I worked there for a year and I was a you know, I was 17 turned 18 that year. Um and at the end of it we came up for evaluations and they gave me a 3 cent raise. 3 cents. And I know I worked harder than three cents, you know, so I never forgot that. That is the worst raise I've ever gotten. Isn't that just like a slap in the face? Why would you even give me a raise? <sighs> hey, Violet, good to see you. I hate it. I prefer waiting tables. It's I hate it. I prefer waiting tables. As soon as I discovered line cooking, Susie, I was out of fast food. Like, I stayed in fast food just because that was all I know, but then I ended up Went to a pastry school in Louisville, and I ended up getting a job in the mall that was like a pretzel slash cookie place. And um, 
so I worked there, but the management there was uh, not the best. And um, so I was looking for a different job because the mall closed at like eight and I needed to work a couple more hours later. So I needed a place that stayed open longer. And in the mall was a cheesecake factory. It was connected to it. And I had no idea what I had never been to the cheesecake factory. I had no idea what I was signing up for. I went there. I had my chef uniform on because that's what, um, you know, the dress for the part. Since I got my whites, that's what I wore to like every interview. I'm so glad I didn't have to have a wardrobe because that wasn't me. Basketball shorts and t-shirts was my attire. So the fact that I just had a uniform I could wear, <coughs> excuse me, was fantastic. So I just went there and I was like, oh, I want an application. And they're like, oh, they're doing open interviews right now. You want an interview right now? And I was like, uh, sure. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. So I wasn't ready for, I don't think I was wearing my whites in that case. Um, I was wearing, I had a school hoodie though. So I was wearing my hoodie jeans and I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting an interview. And she's like, you're fine. I'm like, okay. So I filled out the um, application and then I had my interview and they had three managers interview me. And that was the most mm -hmm. intense interview I had ever been on. Mm -hmm. So the first interview was with um, the executive chef and he was very nice. He was very quiet. This, you know, and I was like, this does not sound like an executive chef because he was just quiet, you know, talking a little bit about how things were. Um, and and then the next interview was with the general manager or not the general manager. Yeah, the general manager of the restaurant. And he was like, hey, so what are you going to do? And we got we got tickets. I back when it printed tickets like the tickets are printing and all of a sudden eight tickets pop out. What are you going to do? you know, well, this is a, a boss, you know, the loud and in your face kind of thing. And I was like, oh, well, you just take it one at a time and make the salads, ask for help if you need help. Like, I was pretty good with my answers right away. And he's like, okay, okay. And then the third interview was with the sous chef. And um, I remember he he asked me how much I was asking for. And I think minimum wage at that time was six fifty. So I asked for... Um, 725 I was like yeah I'm gonna ask for like 725 I think I'm worth it you know I thought that asking a little bit over it and this man so he asked me what I'm asking for I said 725 and he told me to ask for nine dollars he's like, you should ask for nine dollars I'm like really he's like yes I'm like okay so I put down nine dollars and then he was done with that interview and it went back to the um general manager so he was like uh steven which was the kitchen manager i remember his name he was like he really likes you you know they're gonna go ahead and offer you how much are you asking i said nine dollars and he's like we can do that we go ahead and get you started next week and i was just like what just happened like you know i went in to put in an application next you know i'm walking out of the job that's that's paying me two dollars more an hour than i was going to ask for and it was the best thing that ever happened to me um at the moment at that time you know because they taught me how to be a line cook. I'm so grateful that they were my first job. They're the ones who, um, cause they had standards, you know, they have requirements. They have like, you have to memorize every salad, like the recipe, you got cards and they like quiz you on stuff. Like it was intense. You had to know your stuff. And I'm very thankful that was my first job. Cause that kind of set the bar to how to be a line cook. And then the other jobs were, you know, Applebee's, Ruby Tuesdays, those bars were kind of lower a bit on, on, um, I don't know, the level of, um, work, I guess, you know, and ability and stuff because the Cheesecake Factory was real ingredients mixing together and cooking and stuff, you know, so it was, I don't know, it was, uh, it was a good experience for me and, um, okay, I'm sorry, I kind of went off on a story there, but that was, that's twice in my life that I went to apply for a job and they gave me more money than I asked for. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I'm behind. Not too bad. Okay. I thought lives are Saturday. Didn't even know until I signed in just now. They usually are, but I postponed my yesterday. Yester, West, yesterday. Yesterday one to today. Oh, Jennifer answered that. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, guys, we got about 10 minutes left. Any last questions? I tried line cooking as well, and they worked us without breaks and lunch, so I quit after three weeks and turned them into the workforce office. Never looked back. Yep. 
yeah, you gotta, they do that. <laughs> the kitchen, you gotta have a certain personality, I think, to work as a line cook in a kitchen. Um, you have to be used to a lot of stuff, like, it's hot, too, like, you gotta be used to the heat. I always volunteered to organize the cooler. If they're like, oh, who wants to do truck? I'll do it, just because I wanted to be in the coolers, because it was, ugh, it was always so hot. Um, yeah, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hours uh, standing on your feet in one place. And it can be exciting when you're in there and you got a good partner and, you know, things are flowing. But like if you're running out of stuff or your partner's not strong and you're having, you know, it's not fun, right? It's just hectic. <laughs> Chrissy worked a bit at Burger King, McDonald's, and Arby's. Yep, it's a fast food. Where I want to say Arby's was my favorite by far. I think the managers were just nicer. Managers make a difference. They really do. Oh, Publix was my first job as a bad girl. Nice. Then I worked at grocery stores for a while. So I went from um, kitchen. So then I had like a grocery store job and then I would have a line cooking job because having two line cooking jobs is exhausting. So um, I started like I worked at the bakery in the morning shift and then I would work um, the evening shift as a line cook. So I did both pastry and line cooking for a while. You know, like I've been in the work industry for 20 years. I've picked up a lot. Um, and it's like I've had I've had a lot of jobs, too. And I feel like I've learned something from everyone. Oh, hey, Stacy. Hey, Nolan. How are you? It's awesome how things just work out. It really is. It really is. And like every decision leads to where you went, you know, they're like, oh, but if I would have changed that, then I wouldn't have gotten this and I wouldn't have done that, you know, so you could have like, uh, I wonder, you know, like, I wonder if I didn't go to pastry school, if that would have been better for me, because having that, it was expensive. And it ultimately ended up being useless, it felt, you know, it came and it was so expensive and useless, because I didn't get the proper education, in my opinion, you know, so, um, and I've always had to work two jobs to pay for that education. So um, I wonder what it would be like if I had never did it because I would work next to people who didn't go to college and they're, you know, they just had to work at the same job for a while and they're making more money. But anyway, I mean, you can all, you can speculate, you can wonder, but it all works out for a reason. I grew up in the restaurant business. My mother had a coffee shop and all five kids worked there from the time we were big enough to reach the sink. Wow. How was that like working in your family, family restaurant? Glad you're back to doing food bank calls. Yes, I'm going to try and have them on Fridays. Um, just kind of seeing what extra food they have, you know, if they have some there. Um, they get a lot of stuff at one time that they really just can't get rid of so my last fast food job was a driver for pizza rack in high school wow hired to delivery free, free some tips and nowadays i'm like remember when people like pizza delivery got drivers had to just know the addresses you know they had to know stuff they couldn't or they used a paper map how and where did you and hubby meet? Oh, Cheryl, we met online on a dating app called OkCupid. Okay um, I have dated online my whole dating career. Is it a career? I don't know, my whole dating experience. Um, <laughs> make a career out of dating. Okay. Um, yes, so because I've always been working and I don't go out and do anything and I didn't want to date a person I was working with so I would do online dating so all of my relationships have been from online dating um and yeah husband reached out to me and he started talking to me he actually read my profile and he his first message was three to four paragraphs good punctuation spelling was correct he brought up several references in my profile and talked about it and asked questions and I was and he was two hours away from me so I'm like oh, I don't want a long distance relationship and I felt like two hours was a long way but I'm like but this this, this message is too good to pass up like it was just it stood out so much amongst the masses 
so we started writing back and forth and then um we swapped numbers and I always I might seem a little shallow but I always gotta have a voice check you know like I'm I'm a little picky about the man's voice I like a a deep manly voice you know so I was like oh okay we as you start online dating you start developing a checklist right and so by the end of it you have like okay let's go through the checklist let's see and the voice was one of them and he passed the voice test and I was like all right you've got a good voice okay and we could talk on the phone for a little bit and then um we went on a coffee date where he came all the way to me and we only had like 30 minutes and we talked yeah you know I mostly talked and he just kind of listened which kind of is still that way. Like I'm the, I'm the talker obviously. And um, yeah, and it was a pretty good date. You know, I was like, yeah, this guy's nice, but I was also dating a second person. Like I wasn't committed to either one. I just happened to schedule the dates around the same time. Right. So I was, I went on this second date with Raul and uh, it was a pretty good date. You know, it was, it was nice. He seemed like a nice guy, but then I went on a second date with future husband and it just, blew Raul out of the water after after our second date we uh that was it it was a it was a good date and uh yeah so we made it work and about a year later I ended up moving to him and um well no I ended up moving in with him probably six months after we started dating and then we got married pretty much a year to the day of us starting to date so we started dating in like September and then we got married October the next year so that's pretty I mean we just knew it was a long story sorry <laughs> Judy says she also worked at Wendy's but only three months it was I was too um you like working in supermarkets yes I like supermarkets it's not as hot like it's just I always enjoyed that because it's not in front of a hot grill you know like I could imagine I've had where I've had two kitchen jobs and it's just oh I made a lot of friends with co-workers regular drive through and front counter yeah and it is nice to uh, see people you're like hey welcome you know it's it's nice to talk to people if you're a people person like being in the front taking orders and stuff is nice and I just I prefer the kitchen you know Bye, Chrissy. Thanks so much for being here. It was an experience for sure, Carolina. We don't really know anything else. It was just our life. All customers were like family. You're so right. <laughs> Good punctuation and spelling skills. Swoo. <laughs> they don't have that anymore. That's romantic. Love that story. We do have a good story. We do have a good story. Oh, my goodness. We were both so ready to just, um, like, we were both givers. And once we found another giver, we're like, wow, is this what it's like? And I kept waiting for something, right? I kept like, all right, so what's wrong with him? Like, something's got to be wrong with him, you know? And I kept waiting to discover what's wrong with him. And I'm still waiting. I haven't discovered what's wrong with him yet. So let's cross our fingers. We never discover it. <laughs> uh Judy says, I did phone date lines before computer dating. My husband was number 86 that I met in person. That was over a period of five years. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I went on a lot of first dates. Like, I've had a lot of first dates. And some of them have been on second dates, but a lot of first dates. And then there's just the people that you've talked to. And, like, and at first, I pity dated a lot where you felt bad for the guy. So... You went out with him and plus I didn't have standards you know I was I didn't have any experience with guys when I started online dating and um, <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure my daughter knows a little bit about men before I send her out into the dating world because um, you gotta be prepared for some stuff and I think between online dating and working in the kitchen industry you know you learn to deal with men um, and uh, Sorry, got to talk about that. So you have to, um, anyway, sorry. So lots of first dates because you, like, I can tell pretty much, pretty off the bat if we were going to hit it off or not, or they didn't, they didn't like me or I didn't like them, you know. Wow, one year, I just hit 12 years and I'm still not married. Oh, Jennifer. My husband's first anniversary of passing is next month. Can't believe it's almost a year. My friends are trying to get me dating again. 
And I'm like, no, people can't do it. Patty, like, your husband was your person. It's not like you guys have something solid, you know, when he passed. So I couldn't imagine moving on that quickly either. Like, I can understand, like, where they're where their heart is in the matter, you know, but when you lose that, that that's a big piece, you know, so, and I'm sorry, I'm sure that's going to be really rough, but, um, um, are, do you have a plan? Are you going to go visit him for that day? If this makes sense, I'd like a companion, but not a spouse. I prefer to be alone a lot of the time. And I get that, Violet. Oh, Jennifer's going by Jennifer. Yeah, that's about it. It's been an hour. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, had a lot of fun. Don't forget, I have a big collaboration coming up on Wednesday with Brooke from Southern Frugal Mama. So that's going to be a really fun video where I'm going, I use, I had a $20 budget and I had to cook seven meals for single people. So like if you're only cooking for one or two, that kind of a challenge and that was a challenge so make sure you stay tuned for that oh kitty says i met a guy in plenty of fish i used to do plenty of fish too he lured me over to his apartment in the middle of the night with german cake we no longer date but we're still friends man if you if they know german cake way to girl's heart right all right bye everybody thanks for hanging out with me i'll catch you next time on mama birds <laughs>